Hi everyone, right in front of me are the P12 Max high performance 120mm fans coming from Arctic. I'd like to thank Arctic to have provided all these fans for me to share with you guys. I will talk about the structure of the fans, the uh, connection of the fans itself, and also the performance and inclusive of the accessories. Now, having so much fans over here, right, I have something special for you guys. So, let's begin. Starting off with the specification itself, as you can see on my top left, this is the P12 Max. And at the bottom, this is the P12 ARGB. I've taken out the ARGB version just to let you see that both of these fans have the same design. The only difference are the specification on my right. Now, take note on the P12 Max where you have this blue highlighted wordings over here. You can do the comparison against the P12 ARGB version. Now, at any point of time, you can pause this video and to compare the specs between them. I will only cover on the specs on the P12 Max, whereby this fan is able to ram at a low RPM of 200 and at a max RPM of 3000. The airflow is 81.04 CFM and the steady pressure is 4.35 mm H2O. And as for the noise calculation here, right, I have no idea what does this stands for, but later on this video, right, I will show you that when this fan ramp up at 3000 RPM, right, you will hear how loud these fans are. One thing good about these fans itself, they are using the mechanism which I in favor of, which is the dual ball bearing. Reason for this, right, it's going to last the fan for a very long time, as in like the usage. That's why I like dual ball bearing fans. Now, of course, these fans are on 4-pin PWM connector, whereby you can control the RPMs itself. As for the current, it's slightly higher as compared to the ARGB. Now, the drawing amperage of this fan is at 0 0.29 ampere. With this said, something very important you need to take note, whereby, as I mentioned, each fan is drawing at 0 0.29. Estimated is 0 0.3. Now, if you daisy train three fans together, right, it's going to draw at a amperage of 0 0.9 ampere. Do check on your motherboard fan heaters what kind of amperage it is capable of because some of the motherboard is capable of 1 ampere. Having 3 fans is not a problem, but if you do have 4 fans, right, it go above 1 ampere. So, if your motherboard fan header is rated only 1 ampere, right, it's not going to last. You might dam even damage the uh, fan header itself. So, take note on this. Now, as for the uh, measurements itself, right, these fans are the standard 120 by 120 mm with a thickness of 25 mm. When you purchase this fan, it comes with a package this way. I'd like to talk about the package itself. Now, all this while Arctic product, they have been going green, as in like using recycled cardboard. As you can see over here, carbon natural. In fact, they have a URL, you can pay a visit. They have not chipped out on the imprints, like showing you the product, having the uh, barcode and the serial number, which is over one side and at least the other side telling you a brief description of these fans they are the high performance 120 fans and at the back it shows you the specification of the fan and in the event if you're having problems with these fans as in like not functioning and such you need technical support you can reach out to their technical support by scanning this QR code or if you experience something that you like to improve on these fans and you like to give feedback, you can scan on the same QR code, which you can feed the feedback. Additional touch to this, whereby sometimes when you purchase a product, they give you a leaflet saying thank you and such. I find that that is killing trees. Else, Arctic have done differently. When you take out SNI, uncap it, right, you'll see this, which is imprint on the box. Thank you for choosing Arctic. Now I've been talking a lot, a lot about the uh, box itself. Oh, one thing. If you are to use the fan itself, right, do not throw this box. Reason being, right, this is a six year warranty um, fan. So in the event, if it's faulty, you can repack it, send it back to Arctic. They will give you the replacement under the warranty period. Now, as mentioned, I've been talking a lot about the packing and such about this box itself. Why am I saying this? Because this box doesn't look, you know, premium or such. Where some of the products you find that their packing is so premium and etc. Now that 
will have cost involvement. Else Arctic comes simple, they pack it in such a way, just a fan, and we four screws to this cardboard, I mean cardboard box, and that's it. Which I find it very practical, as you all know that all Arctic fans and such, their products are very affordable. So, as mentioned, this involved in cost. If they were to cut down the cost on the packing itself, right, you're getting a premium product, but not the package. Simple, neat, and straightforward. Next thing is the fan structure of this P12 Max. It doesn't wobble. It is very sturdy. Be it the front and the back, you will see there are four anti-vibration rubber grommets. See, at the back too. And for the blade, right, this is something they are trademarked, which is a five blader, and it does scoop up lots of air. Starting from the generation of P12 itself, they have implemented another thing, which is on their ARGB fans, the P12 ARGB, which is this ring over here. So they have bring the technology, the aerodynamics uh, design to this P12 Max. And let me just show you, when you scoop, right, you can look at the cone, or should I say the ring itself, right? It doesn't wobble, it will stay straight. Their QC is pretty strict. The only setback about this fan itself, right? The cables that's attached to the fan is only with one 4-pin PWM fan header, that's all. Else, if you were to purchase their other fans, like the uh, ARGB fans, they have daisy chain. Now, on the uh, corn itself, right, it's only with one connector, but it's with a reason. Reason being, right, these fans are drawing at 0 0.29 ampere, and Arctic have been thinking as a PC builder itself, you do not know the voltage, I mean the voltage on the motherboard fan header, right, you just daisy chain 4 and you just plug it in I can tell you your motherboard fan header will damage so they deliberately done it as single plug to ensure that make sure you plug this either to one of the fan header for one fan or to purchase a fan hub that is powered by SATA so that will safeguard you from over daisy chaining and to plug into one fan header and this will prevent you from damaging the motherboard fan header. Before I conduct the thermal test with this P12 Max on a 360 liquid freezer AIO, I would like to illustrate the noise as in like on idle and on load. As you can see here, the microphone is away from the radiator, about one feet. So this is at idle, this is how it sounds like. And when it's at full load, this is how it sounds like. And this is at idle. And this is at load. At the very beginning of the video itself, I mentioned to share with you something special which I've done right now that is to mount all this P12 Max fans as in push-pull configuration on a Liquid 360 AIO. Now, I will share with you first with the noise that it will sound at idle and the noise that it will create during load. Once that's done right, I will then conduct the thermal test and to show you the results. Now, this is at idle. And this is at load. And this is at idle. And this is at load.
To test the performance of this P12 Max fans, I have made use of all these PC components, starting with the processor, which is the 13th Gen Intel Core i7-13700K. For the motherboard, I'll be using a ASUS Tank ROG Strix B760 F Gaming Wi-Fi. And for the RAMs, they are a 32GB kit DDR5 RAMs, coming from Team Group. Now, the configuration on the UEFI itself is pretty straightforward. At the AI Twinkle, I've done the XMP profile on my RAMs, which run at 6000 MHz clock frequency and with this timing. And the next thing I've done is to limit the uh, power wattage drawn from the uh, PSU to the motherboard itself. As you can see here, right, the long duration package power limit is at 235. Now, for the Core i7-13700K, the max TDP is actually 253. The reason for me to limit down the wattage, which is 235, because I wouldn't want my processor to go beyond 90 degrees Celsius. Based on the fact that in Singapore, right, it's a very humid and hot country. And my room right now, when I did this test, right, is at 31 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty hot. So having to limit the uh, long duration power drawn and the uh, short duration package power drawn, I've set it to 235 watt so that at all times right it will not go above 86 degrees celsius next i've actually done the uh, offset on the v core itself which you can see i've set to negative value and to set it at 0 0.175 so as and when the uh, processor need the power drawn from the psu itself right it will only draw whatever is needed in order to run at a clock speed of 5 gigahertz or more next thing i've set is actually the uh, fence itself as i find no point setting it my own uh, curve itself so i'll just set it at full so everything you see on the benchmark itself right the p12 max will run at full speed which is 3000 or above now during the test itself right you will see something like this whereby I have shown you I've done the uh, pull configuration and the push-pull configuration. Now, at the top here, this is making use of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 Liquid AIO. At the bottom right, just to add in more fun, I've placed a LT720 coming from Deep Cool. Same thing with the pull and push-pull configuration. So as it run right, take note of the temperature of the CPU, the motherboard, the VRMs, the DDR5, and the M.2. And at all times, right, make sure that you look at this core usage, which is at 100% load. See? And also to take note on the CPU fans, which is ramping up at 3000 consistently, it will fluctuate more or less, but it will stay at 3000 RPM. Now, for the pull configuration, right, you only have one fan status because it's one set. But for the push-pull configuration, you have two set, whereby it will show you both set from the front and the back is running at 3000 RPM consistently or even more. This will fluctuate. So by the end of time, right, I will explain to you what are the results and what are my findings when you place this P12 max fan on a 360 liquid AIO. Let's begin. The results are out. I've done all the uh, four tests based on the pull and pull push configuration of these two liquid AIO. Starting at the top section over here, I'm making use of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. Now, with the pull configuration, having 3P12 Max at the front pulling cool air from the rear to cool down the uh, radiator itself, right? Take a look at the temperature. It's 78 degrees Celsius. In fact, it's hovering around 76 to 78 
and it doesn't go beyond 80 degrees Celsius, which is good. And once I've actually done this test, right, I've continued on to do a push-pull configuration, whereby I have done two sets of P12 Max, which at the front and at the rear. So total of six fan doing the pull-push. Now, look at the temperature. It's 74 degrees Celsius. It drops 4 degrees Celsius lower. And also at the fact that looking at other temperature like the motherboard temperature, the VRM temperature, the DDR5 and the M.2, see how much it have lowered down. As I deliberately place it this way, as you can see, the air is pushing towards the motherboard itself. So assuming that this is actually a case fan, right, it will sweep lots of air to the motherboard. And with one single set, these are the temperature. And when I add on with another set, these are the temperature. See, a big difference. It cooled down the system very well. Now, at the lower section here, this is the LT720. It does the same. You have witnessed what the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 have done. See, so it applies the same to the LT720 from Deep Cool. Look at the temperature, it drops. I hope you guys have enjoyed what I've shared with you. Things I like about this fence, starting off with the build itself, it's very solid, it doesn't flex. Second of all, they are making use of my favorite mechanism, which is the dual ball bearing. And why do I like this dual ball bearing? Because as it operates right, it will last longer as compared to fluid dynamic bearing. Next thing will be the uh, price itself, whereby I've checked in USD, it's $15 per piece, and in Singapore dollars, it's $19. Next, these are all performance fans. So if you are the kind to look for ARGB fans, right, these are not the fans for you. But if you want to build a stealthy look PC itself, and you want performance, and doesn't break your pocket, this will be the fans for you. With this said, I'd like to thank Arctic to have provided all these fans for me to experience and to share with you guys. For those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. If you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.